and thank you for joining us on The Core TV once again. So my name is Unique Williams, I'll be your host today, and uh, beside me I have the lovely Marcia Brown of Marcia Brown Productions. Yes ma'am. Um, she's an actress, an entrepreneur, a writer, and a producer. The list, trust me, continues to go on and on and on. Not only has she appeared in the national Jamaican pantomime with the likes of um, Oliver Samuels, Leone Forbes, Letna Allen, yes. going into <laughs> Valir. Um, honestly, she's an amazing person. I'm so grateful and, and happy that she, she is here to uh, you know, listen to a couple of my questions. So, um, the first question that I'd like to go into, you started up Marcia Brown's production. I wanted to know if you could tell our viewers a little bit about the inspiration that brought you to that point to want to develop and start up the production company. Well, um, I actually started out as the Jamaica Players. When we came here, I came to Canada in 1989. And um, of course, I was very active in Jamaica, you know, in, in the plays, pantomimes, radio dramas, you know, commercials, you name it. As a matter of fact, I, at the time when I left Jamaica, I, I was peaking, you know, getting more exposure, getting calls for more, you know, more involvement, you know, getting calls for more auditions and stuff like that. So when I came here, it was really at that peak. And, you know, when you're at your peak or getting to your peak and you have to leave that, mm -hmm. it's like the momentum. You come to Canada and, you, you know, in Jamaica, I remember the night when they had the send-off for me at the Jamaican, um, at the Little Theatre, you know, everyone was saying, oh, Marcy, you know, when you go to Canada, you're going to do great, you're going to meet up on, you know, you just see yeah. it as more opportunities exactly. because it's always going abroad, you know, you know, more opportunities are going to be on a bigger stage and, and, and stuff like that, but it wasn't so, mm -hmm. you know, coming here not knowing anyone and, you know, not knowing where to go, you know, and the, the culture is so diverse. I mean, in Jamaica, all you have to deal with is just us. Mm -hmm. But coming to Canada, you have so many different ethnic groups. You know, you have Jamaicans, you have, you know, Italians, you have Greeks, you have Canadians, you have, you know, everybody is here. And so it was just to find out who do I connect with. And uh, I remember coming and, and someone told me in Jamaica about the Joneses, Denise and Alan Jones, and, and they gave me Denise's number and said, when you go to Canada, give them a call. And so I came and um, I called Denise. And when I called her, luckily they were doing a production just a couple months after I got here. And she says, well, you know, I was so excited. You know, I, I sent her everything, my resume, my, my headshots, because, you know, you come to Canada, you say, it's bigger and stuff like that. So I had my resume and, you know, my pictures and stuff like that and sent it, sent it to her. And she called me back and she says, well, we're doing a production. Why don't you come down and audition for a part? And I, I remember going down to, the, it was at the Jamaica Canadian Association, the center down on DuPont. Mm -hmm. we, I went down there and I was nervous, 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 because of Canada, I'm a dead, you know. <laughs> So you think it's like big and huge, you know, getting called for an audition. Yeah. So I went and there were a number of people there and I read a part and I said, I don't know, but I read it. I gave it my all and um, they made the decision the same evening to cast me in the role. And so that was my first start. It is a play called We, we, Run, things. we Run Things. We Run Things. It was produced by Denise Jones and written by um, Devon Horton. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the very first, very first production I did. And after that, it, it, it's like if, if, if a group, a producer, say like the Joneses, didn't put on a play, there was really nothing else happening. Yeah. You know, it's just like the Mother's Day one time show or had, it had to be like a, a holiday yeah. for someone to do something. So of course you go into this dry spell again, mm -hmm. nothing to do. And, 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 and I did another play, a school tour, you know, with Theatre in the Rough and we toured 120 schools across Canada. And, and this lady said, you know, you, you're great, you should get, a, get, a, get an agent and, and go to, to auditions and stuff like that. So I got an agent, I got in and I got my professional headshots, spent a lot of money and run up and down and stuff like that and got an agent, went down, auditioned for the agent. The agent absolutely liked me. But again, because of your, their skin color, you, you don't get called for every role, you know. Yeah. The, the, the role has to be so specific. You know, it has to be like a black female between this age group and blah, 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 you know, but it has to be specific. 
to a black person. It, it, it's not just a role, you just go and read and they like you. So you would go to an audition and you would just bump into just about every black actress in the city. Because everybody is going for the same role. We used to call it our little meeting ground. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and yeah. so after a while it got frustrated because you, know, you go in and you read and you don't get called back and stuff. You know? so. It went on for a while. I went and I got my nine to five job. I said, no, I don't think this is going to make it. I can't survive here on that because no money was coming in. So I went, I got my nine to five job. And um, then we started to write these kits and we tried it at little events, you know, and it worked. You know, people liked it, what we, you know, coming in and doing comedy skits. And so that grew from one performance to the next, get a call for another one and a call for another one and it just spiraled, you know, into something bigger. And um, then we tried the full length play in 2000. My friend Aston Cook did a play called Country Duppy and Mr. Aston wanted something bigger than just the skits now. So he sent me the script, I like it. Never have no money, but I asked my mother and my sisters to help me to do it. And so everybody chipped in. My mother threw in some money and my sisters threw in some money and it was like a combination. And that helped me to do Country Duppy. And it, from that, it's just one year after the next. So that's basically how it got started. And we had to just continue doing it. So, you know, we can create work for the actors in our exactly. community because if we don't do it, they won't get to shine. They won't get a stage because no one's going to call you know, the like the Allens or the Naga Morrises, you know, or, you know, all the, all the actors that have worked with us. You have to wait until this specific occasion and you go in. So, you know, having Master Brown Productions where we can do a production once or twice for the year, it gives us that opportunity to be on a bigger stage. So basically that's it. And of all these wonderful productions, there there have been many, such as you know, Wipe That Smile, Rosetta, yeah. um, Single Entry, um, Country Duffy, as you mentioned. Yeah. I was wondering which one of those has been your favorite thus far. Um, they are all special. They they are all special. Each one, each one has a different storyline. So you know, it, it, it's, it's if I if I have to look at it from that perspective, I would say. Um, Rosetta it's, 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 Rosetta is a special play. Rosetta, it has something about it that I connected with that play. And I don't know if it's because of the role that I played in it, but there is something special and unique about Rosetta. Um, feminine justice. I like feminine justice as well. Um, because, again, the message behind feminine justice is so profound. So, you know, those two plays... The, the messages behind those two plays, I guess, is it, the reason why I would opt to say that those are my favorite. But single entry, single entry will add the old place upside down, yeah. you know? I mean, single entry went on and on and on, you know, and people just love single entry. We, I, single entry thus far is the, it's, 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 it's a play that we have done so many performances. I mean, we started out doing seven, then we added four, then we added another four, and if I, I think if I bring back sing, um, Common Law yes, again, yes. people would still go out to see Common Law. Why that smile it deep? No man, all of them. <laughs> if, if, if I start to look at it that way, me gonna come right back to none of them are special, everything, every one of them good. But they are all great. Each one has a different storyline. I try to do different storylines because there are so many different stories to tell exactly. you know so you can't keep telling the same story over and over mm -hmm. because uh, when you go on stage you'd be surprised to know that you're touching on somebody's life True. right there in the audience they may not say anything but someone can relate to everything that you're doing on stage That's very so true.